this is a situation like this where I question my life choices. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm constantly soaked. Yeah. Well, this is Fossa, and it's the biggest waterfall in the Faroe Islands, which is where I am at the moment. I've just run a workshop with Mass Peter Everson, who's somewhere at the top <laughs> up there. I'm going to join him now. And what I want to do is talk all about um, just how I go about getting a wide angle shot with something like this. You know, the, the thought process around that foreground area, really. I mean, the background's going to take care of itself, but. Hopefully I'll be able to find a good composition. So come with me, see what we can find. And um, yeah, it's gonna be amazing. Oh, this place is so stunning, it really, really is. So one of the things in the Faroe Islands is that there's slopes everywhere. You can see the mountains are just sloping into the fjords. So a lot of the hiking is on small sort of paths like this that are maybe made by sheep. And it's quite bad on the ankles. So if you come into the Faroe Islands, then just remember, have better boots than I've got on at the moment, which aren't great, you need ankle boots. I've worn those for the last week, but they're so wet from last night's massive hike to um, Drangania, then I, I've gone for these because it's just a short hike up here. But oh, my word, this place is so amazing. <laughs> Right, well, it looks like I've got to go straight up here now. That's the other thing in the Faroes. You're sort of just following the sheep, really. So, up here. Ugh. It's a hard thing to know That your soul will stay hollow Right, I'm on the um, right level now for the waterfall. It's just a little bit further down there and around. I just, I came here. This is one of the first places I came when I first came to the Faroes four years ago. And I have to say, I've been back a few times now and it's, it never f fails to amaze me. It, it really is a beautiful and very epic <laughs> setting. I can see why this set um, James Bond's is the villain's lair here because it really is stunning. Oh wow, amazing. Right, a little bit further, we'll get to the waterfall and it's been raining hard. So that means that there's going to be a big waterfall. Keep going. <laughs> oh wow. That looks epic. There's a lot of water in it. Oh my word. That's so good. I think it's going to be a case of trying to keep the camera dry is going to be the hardest bit here. Okay, so I've arrived on location and um, it's pretty epic. Uh, I'll just have a quick chat with Mass by the river because he's just been recording a video. But first of all, the first thing I do when I arrive is just to, you know, just get out my phone and I'm going to show you my, use my phone just to try and find a composition before I get my camera out. It's so, so important, as I said in last week's video, to just try and think about that. And um, if you think about that, if you think about your phone first and not your camera and just look and observe, then I guarantee you'll get a better shot. And with a, fog, with a wide angle, then on my phone, I've got a 0.5, which means that I can do super wide, like about... 13 millimeters and then see um, what I can get and then I'm going to talk a little bit more about the complications around um, compositions with moving water as well this is so cool big drop there don't want to go down there but it doesn't get better than this this is epic okay so when I arrive at something like this it's quite overpowering there's obviously a long shot of the big waterfall up there um, first thing is safety so I always stay you know a reasonable amount of distance from the drop um, I always know that if I fall then I might hurt myself bang my knee but I'm not going to drop off the end and that's really important safety comes first 
And then I'm just looking for um, things with my phone, really. So I put, because I know I'm going to shoot really wide here, I, I want to try and find something where the foreground is quite smooth, not that distracting, and takes your eye into the sea, into this top waterfall. And the top waterfall is the payoff. The bottom part of the image leads you into that payoff. The tricky thing with any type of wide angle photography is that mid-ground. How are you going to deal with the mid-ground? Ideally, you'd have some water going through the mid-ground to connect the two together. But in this case, I think it might be quite difficult. Okay, so, so I found Mass. He is very wet. Um, it is very wet up here. And um, yeah, I think you're going to show us a little bit about what you've been shooting. You got anything good? Yeah, I think so. Uh, so I've been shooting the waterfall and I focused a lot on working with my shutter speed. So I found a foreground with some water coming straight into your face. Okay. And then it basically just like leads your eye up into the background cool, cool. waterfall. Cool. Super simple. Like. Yeah. Well, maybe you can show us. I'll just um, grab my camera and we'll have a look. So I'm going to come down here. Uh, there's going to be a, I'll talk a, a little bit through the composition around this area and then probably a little bit further up as well. But Matt has got a video out on um, shutter speeds and how important it is to think about the shutter speed in your foreground, in the background, the movement of water. So make sure you check that out. It's already out and um, yeah, it's, it'll be an amazing video, I guarantee you. <laughs> this is like this is a situation like this where I question my life choices. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm utterly soaked. Yeah, it's a bit but, crazy. Uh, it'll be worth it. It's all worth it. Yeah, yeah, it will be worth it. <laughs> so, I've got it at the widest setting and then basically just walk around. I don't want to fall in there, so I've got to be careful. So you can see here that on this side of the image it's quite... Um, overbalanced um, uh, I need something more on this side I like the bottom bit here um, and I actually like this diagonal here so it might work that but probably this is a little bit too dominant so that means that I've got to try and get onto that rock I don't want to go onto that rock because I will fall to my death if I go lower what happens so if I go lower then you can see that this part of the image it's much more prominent, so I get a lot more in this part of the image here. And um, but then this rock becomes quite dominant on the on the left hand side. If I move over, these rocks are dominant. So really, I want to try and get maybe on that rock or go forward. But I want to try and get a little bit further to the left to try and make these rocks on the right less dominant. So that's the idea. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and get on that rock. Now, the worst that can happen here is I can just get really wet. Now on this rock, I've got, um, I could just shoot quite high and it's, these rocks are still dominant. So I've got to then think, it, what happens when I go lower? So as I go lower now, and you can see that then I make this quite a prominent part of the image. And these rocks become less dominant. I'm a little bit worried about this rock up here, but this is the main, prominent part of the image. So if I can get my camera here, I think I can get quite a good shot. The problem is how I'm going to do that. <laughs> okay, so um, what I've got is my camera in position, I've got a good position to be able to take it, and then this works really well actually, because you've got this amazing waterfall, and then this sort of V-shape that sort of leads your eye in. I think 14 millimeters is going to work a little bit better. It'll be interesting if you've masked up here to 16 millimeters. I think having that extra um, width means that I can do it vertically and then basically um, I'm just going to shoot at different shutter speeds and if you're interested in shutter speeds go and check out Mass's Mas Mas video but what I've got here is I've got a V coming down some nice water that just leads your eye up into that waterfall and I'm going to shoot for a shutter speed for this a shutter speed for this I'm just a little bit bothered about that rock there but I'll probably just um, reduce the shadows a little bit on, on that so the first thing I'm going to do, I can't see the front of it, so I'm just going to wipe it, hopefully get the water off it, and then I'm going to take the shot. And that looks amazing.
Right, it's the next morning now and I am in this fairly iconic location of this amazing winding road. Um, this is near the um, capital Tush van, pronounce all the words wrong. But there's a couple of waterfalls here that I thought it'd be really interesting to shoot. One that I'm shooting back in that direction and one here, over here, that I can get a little bit of the road in and, and the um, amazing island in the background which is perfectly framed in these two amazing hills at either side. First, first though, I just want to talk about this. If you're shooting a wide angle scene like this, there's a temptation to always want to get a bit of foreground in, but I feel that like this wall doesn't quite work for this scene because it sort of blocks your sort of entry to it. We almost need like a diagonal or something else. So in this scene here, what I would do, I'll just show you quickly. Oh. I would go past the wall. Yeah, so I'd go past the wall there like that and then shoot down here more like that and probably need to be a little bit more wide angle. Okay, so we've got all these massive grand waterfalls like the one that I was just at, Fossa. Um, but you don't need that. So you can create something quite amazing with just a small waterfall like this one here. And one of the things that um, I see quite often and that I used to do is when you've got a wide angle lens, you tend to think I'm gonna stand quite close to the subject, but not really close. So you thought of go, so I'm gonna try and get the subject in like that and um, yeah I think that looks good and then you take that but that just creates a very ordinary shot a wide angle lens especially at 14 millimeters but between 14 and sort of 18 millimeters means that you can do something a bit special so you can go a bit closer so in this what you can do is you can make the waterfall seem more dominant in the frame so if I just go quite a lot closer you can see already it's starting to be a bit more interesting. I've got more of the waterfall at the bottom. If I go all even closer, like right down here, and I can create something really dominant at the bottom and create some tension. Now I might want to go up higher or down lower, but that's a really good top tip. Just go low, get close to your subject with a wide angle and use the perspective change to fill up the bottom of your frame. It'll create something special. And with just a small waterfall, you can create magnificent shots. This is amazing. <laughs> So I found this waterfall here, which looks quite interesting. I hopefully I'll be able to get down to it. It's by the side of a road, so I need to try and avoid this sort of barrier here. But I think if I'm low enough, I can sort of create quite an interesting shot. So I'm gonna sort of walk down, have a look, and um, see if I can find something. The light over there just looks so amazing as well. So if I can incorporate that into it, I think it'll be really good. So I'm just gonna go into wide angle and I think down here might be quite good. So just straight across this is looking quite good. Just remember always you can go down with a wide angle like that and it looks really good. So it's just a question of not, you know, having a bit of room there and then thinking about what's coming down here. Now obviously this waterfall is leading me out if I turn it like that, then I could see the destination of where it's leading to through here. But does that work? Nah, maybe not. So I'm just going to walk a little bit further along here. Now that's quite cool. I could just set my tripod up here like that. I 
think that's going to look good. Yeah, so move my tripod here and I can take this shot. I'm just going to be a little bit careful about the foreground. Maybe go a bit closer. Okay, unbelievably, just as I'm starting to record this, the rainbow's just come out there. I think, I think I've got it. I've not got the perfect composition that I want in the foreground, but I've got the rainbow, I think. <laughs> oh, please say I got that. Yeah, it's not, it's not a super strong rainbow, but I definitely got it. An undiscovered landscape film at home. You are, you are. Golden territory, you let it show. <laughs> okay, so I've finally gone for this landscape shot that you can see. Um, here, I'm pointing quite down. I don't want too much sky because it's not brilliant. The waterfall looks amazing. So that's it. Back to the studio to have a look at the photos and speak about a few of the tips. we are shooting foregrounds, waterfalls, wide angle in epic places like this. Amazing. It's like a constant rush. Well, I'm back at home with my cup of tea and um, yeah, I'm really pleased with the photos. Before I go in, I just, I've just got a, a couple of minutes where I just want to go through and give you a few more tips and, and look at a few other photos as well. Um, just I'm going to have a little sip of my tea. Mm, tea, you just don't get English tea like abroad like you do it in England. So I just wanted to speak about the five day deal. You've probably had loads of emails from different photographers about it by now, um, but it really is, isn't just a scam or anything like that. It is really is a lot of really good photographers getting together and sharing courses for a super low value, um, you know, discounting by a huge amount. I think I ended up giving my course for like three or four dollars. Um, and yeah, I wanted to mention one course which in it, which is really good, which is my friend actually, who I spoke to in this, which is Mass Peter Everson. He's in a black and white photography course, two hour long course in this um, bundle. And it's amazing. It really is amazing. Uh, it's worth more than the value of the whole course put together. So I'd recommend getting the course just for that. I've obviously put in a compositional tips um, video, 45 minute long video, which I think again is really useful and it's quick tips that will help you out, you know, whether you're a beginner or an intermediate really. So I wanted to mention that, there's a link in the description. Um, we also help out charity by um, buying it as well because um, some of the money goes to charity. Um, so it's, it's a really good thing all around. Okay, so these um, photos, these waterfalls that, that I took. So I'll just, let's just go back to the last couple that I, I showed because this was really interesting. So the first thing that I did wrong here was um, I set up my camera as soon as I got to the location. I didn't look around. I was actually in a little bit of a rush to, to finish off the video because I, was, I had my plane to catch in about two hours from doing this. But normally what I'd do here is walk around because you can see that this is good. I feel like the, the waterfall dominates and takes you out of the picture a little bit, but the rainbow keeps you in. So I like that. But this one, if I'd have had more time, I'd have spent a little bit more time and if the light had been better. Because I feel like the waterfall is taking you through into the distance um, here. And actually right in the distance is a battleship that was, that was traveling through, which is interesting. But the water's really nice here. I really like this bit here. I probably would have messed again around with exposures. Um, this was a 13th of a second F9. But yeah, I, I wanted to mention that. Quickly back to this photo here. Um, I think this worked really well. Obviously, Mass took this. Go and check out his video um, as well. He probably did a slightly different angle than me. I think he was more straight on on this, which probably works. But I actually like the diagonal through you know, that, that, that um, is taken. I also really liked the, ex the, the 13th of a second I used. It worked really well for this bit of the water here. So as a print, this would look really good, which is something that I'm always thinking about. And then there was just one other photo that I wanted to show you, which was this one. So this was taken on our first morning on our workshop. We got really lucky. And this 
was, I think it just works well because the, the water's just leading your eye all the way down to the sunset. I, I think there's an argument here, looking at it again, that I may have brightened up the waterfall just a little bit, a little bit too much. Um, you've got to be a little bit careful when you're um, editing waterfalls. You don't, you, there's a tendency to want to just get pure whites in the waterfall. So maybe what I should do is just go back to this and just darken those whites down a little bit just to make it just seem a little bit more in keeping with the background. That might be a little bit better. So there we go. That is... That's it for this week's video. Um, thanks to everybody who bought their calendars. They're now shipped. Um, you should be receiving yours um, soon. I know that people in the UK, people in Europe and people in America have started to get them. Um, and there's still a few left. So if anybody wants one of these landscape ones or a portrait one, then there'll also be a link in the description. Okay, until next Sunday, where I'm in Woodland talking about choosing the right focal length for woodland photography, which is apt for this time of the year. Thanks ever so much for watching. Bye.